I've done a number of videos on my Toyota Tundra and the miles per gallon I get both with towing and without towing. Today I want to talk to you about that a little bit and give you some idea of some modifications that I've made relative to that. If you like this video, go ahead, hit like, hit subscribe, feel free to comment. Helps me know what kind of content to put forward in the future. But first let's go ahead and talk about some of the modifications that I've made that influence my miles per gallon. So I've posted a lot of videos about fuel mileage on my Tundra and I've received some comments. Some people get similar MPGs to me, some people get different MPGs to me. So what I want to do is talk about today what influences those MPGs for me and my Tundra and why I do so well with it. Um, the first thing I want to do is divide those. I'm going to divide those into what I consider to be non-modifiable factors and then uh, relative to your truck, modifiable factors. And a lot of this depends on what you use your vehicle for. Um, I have mine set up for what I use it for, which is uh, mostly towing, quite honestly. I do use it. It is my daily driver. I take it back and forth to work. But the vast majority of miles that I put on my truck each year are mostly uh, towing travel trailers um, uh, that my wife and I have uh, across country and on various trips throughout the year. And so a lot of towing miles are put on my vehicle specifically. So the first factor I consider to be non-modifiable is the weather. Um, I live in a part of Georgia where it doesn't snow very often. The last sign of any snow we had was almost eight years ago now in February of 2014. And if you look here, it's going to be uh, December 1st in three days. And look at, uh, we do have some leaves that of course are falling and falling pretty regularly. But uh, this tree here, uh, my uh, maple tree outside my house, which turns bright red, as you can see there at the top, is just beginning to change just now over the past few days or so uh, that it's began to turn color. The reason I say weather is because why warmer climates, uh, when you start your vehicle up, your oil is not as cold, therefore uh, has less viscosity and less resistance. Now that doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you make just a few minute commute back and forth to work, even 15 or 20 minutes, and uh, you live in a cold climate, a good portion of that is going to be warming that engine up. And while it doesn't make a huge difference, it does make a little bit of a difference. Second factor I consider not modifiable is where you live. Specifically, I have a garage and I am able to park my truck in the garage. So on the mornings where it does get down close to freezing, which isn't many as it comes, uh, like I said, it's close to December 1st and we're going to be 75 on December 1st. Usual. But even on those days where it's 75, it still starts off uh, in the low 40s to upper 30s in the morning. Uh, I'm parked in uh, that second garage bay right there to the left. My truck really is always at about 60, 65 degrees when I started up in the morning. And I think that will make a very, very small difference, but somewhat of a difference in your overall fuel mileage. Now, as we get to things that matter that you can modify, let's start with wheels and tires. Well, number one, my wheels are stock and I keep them stock for uh, specifically because I tow. I don't love the wheels. I don't think they look bad on my Platinum, but I don't love the Platinum wheels that the truck came with. And uh, if I had my preference, I would switch to something else, probably uh, some fuels um, or probably some uh, rock stars. I do like those a lot better from an appearance standpoint, but for what I do, this is ideal. Why is that? Well, a couple reasons. One is the size. So uh, they're 20 inches. Now I'm going to get some flack about this. I think some people are going to disagree with me and tell me that 18 inches is ideal, 17 or 18 inches is ideal for a truck, especially a truck that does work. I'm going to disagree with that a little bit. I think it's ideal for a truck that does a fair amount of off-roading. I also think it's, and when we were talking about half ton, I also think it's ideal for a truck that uses E-rated tires. These are not E-rated tires. These are passenger tires that I have on it. So not changing that wheel is important uh, for two reasons. One is the 20 inches with a passenger tire, there's less deformity in the tire, which means there's less flex in the tire, less friction to the road. And, and so properly inflated tires with the 20 inch wheel are going to be ideal. The other thing about those wheels is the offset. The offset is, uh, I think it's plus 64 five on these maybe it's plus 60 but i think it's plus 65 which uh, moves the wheel more inward more toward the midline of the vehicle and as you move the wheel more toward the midline of the vehicle instead of out wider whereas for example a minus 30 offset would bring the wheels way out you have theoretically more wind resistance then the more the wheels are tucked under the vehicle the less wind resistance that you have so not changing the stock wheels is very important. The other thing about the stock wheels is going to an aftermarket wheel. So something like fuels or the rock stars that I might like, those things would cause you to uh, potentially have more weight in the wheel. The more weight you have in the wheel, the harder the engine has to work to get the wheel to turn. So when you add all those things up, so you can modify your wheels, but if you modify your wheels, I would try to stick to something in the same weight range. These weigh about 40 pounds. It's going to be very difficult to find 
something off uh, aftermarket that's going to have the same offset. It's going to be very difficult to find a plus 60 offset in an aftermarket wheel that's just not typical. So either way, you're probably going to lose a little. Now, as for the tires, this is something I have aftermarket, and uh, I am a big proponent of these uh, Michelin Defender um, LTX MSs. The MS stands for mud and snow, of course, um, but uh, this is in the stock size at 275.55 R20. Now, again, is this the ideal tire from an appearance standpoint? No, it's definitely not the ideal tire from an appearance standpoint. I certainly would like um, the look of some Needle Ridge grapplers that I had on uh, the Ford F-150 I had all the way back in 2016. Those, those tires, we put 60,000 miles on that truck. They actually rode great, they wore great, but man, are they heavy. This is this tire, which weighs approximately 40 pounds, I think. Um, that tire in roughly the same size, so I'd probably go a little bit bigger. I wouldn't necessarily... I might go to 35s in it actually, um, but uh, uh, that tire would be uh, just in the stock size would be about 54, 55 pounds. Same thing with uh, a BF Goodrich KO2 would be about 54, 55 pounds in this 275, 55 R20. You start going up into 35s when you're adding a lot of weight in that tire. And so adding a tire that's different is going to add A, a lot of weight, B, it's going to uh, those tires, the, the pattern on them isn't going to be as road friendly. In other words, they're not going to have the low rolling resistance that this Michelin does. So the decreased rolling resistance you would get in a, a tire that's uh, maybe visibly more appealing um, has one functional output. The functional output is if you're off-roading with it, that's uh, a tire that I would definitely uh, appreciate. And there are people who will say that, hey, you should have, if you're doing all that towing, you should have a light truck tire. Actually, I don't need a light truck tire. If you look at, and I've done another video on these tires, if you look at these tires, these tires are rated for over 2,500 pounds of um, load. We're talking piece. about tires. This first number right here, I think, is probably the most important, um, the 275. So the 275 refers to the width. So that's 275 millimeters of width of the tire. As you go up to something wider, again, in an off-road tire, something in like, let's say, the 295 category, or even uh, if you want to do it in inches, something in the 12.5 category, all of a sudden you're going to increase not only road friction because you got increased tire contacting to the ground um, by increasing the width of the tire but you're also going to increase the resistance of air to the tire because you've got a wider tire and I think a good example of this is the new Tundra. Uh, in the new Tundra instead of the pressure being 30 psi in the front and uh, 33 psi in the rear like it is here on my uh, Generation 2 Tundra, on the new 2022 Tundra, it's gonna be 35 and 35. It's kind of interesting. So they're going to a narrower tire. So they're decreasing road friction, they're decreasing wind resistance, they're, they're decreasing the width, but they're also increasing the pressure. So theoretically, less resistance of the tire on the ground. As you start to add aftermarket wheels and tires to that vehicle, the drop in the new the new 2022 Tundra, the drop in fuel mileage is gonna be incredible. Now, if we look at my son's Tundra here, he's got a little bit different than me. He's got a slightly more aggressive tire. Um, uh, he's got an E-rated tire. And uh, let's see here. And it is uh, clearly, it's a light truck tire, as you see right there. And it's 285 is the width. Now, he doesn't get, despite having a two-wheel drive versus my four-wheel drive, he doesn't get anywhere near the mileage I get, but again, he's got a slightly more aggressive tire, not unusually aggressive, but slightly more aggressive tire. And he's also got uh, probably what are some heavier rims on this XSPX. I don't know the actual weight of those, but they sure do look heavier than what I have on mine. And then he's definitely got a tire that's heavier. And he's also got a, a little oversized, which means it would increase road friction and uh, air resistance both. Look at the back of my son's truck bed here. We can see it's open. It's got some leaves that have fallen from this tree over the last day or two. But uh, what we see is that um, his is open. Now, ideally, if you read about it, an open bed like this is probably better for fuel mileage than my closed bed cover is here. But I put more stuff in mine, um, and this is one of those trade-offs where I make a trade and go the opposite direction. I travel a lot with mine, I put tools in mine, I put my generator in there, um, various things I don't wanna get wet routinely, and so I have a bed cover on top of mine. Now, is the bed cover ideal for fuel mileage? No, it's not. You actually, statistically, I think most studies show that you do better with the open end 
uh, vehicle, but it's something you have to make the decision of. Just like uh, my wheel and tire setup versus my son's wheel and tire setup. Which of those things are more important to you? Is it more important for you to have more aggressive tires or is it more important for you to have E-rated tires, which are going to be substantially heavier, or is it more important to have tires that function the way the vehicle was intended, stock tires? Now, there are two things on the back end here that I want to show you that I think both help with fuel economy. Again, all this stuff is marginal, and you're talking about small little changes, but these are specific to towing. The first one is right here. This is the valve for my airbags. Now, I have mine linked as a single airbag. Um, I don't ever really have significantly uneven loads, or I would uh, have two Schrader valves there. I just have one because I have them hooked up to a single line at a T, and that way I know I'm inflating them both at the same time, and they're both carrying the same pressure. So... <clears throat> but when I inflate the airbags, what happens is it allows uh, the load that I'm carrying in my uh, RV travel trailer along with my truck to both sit level. And as they both sit level versus my truck sagging, if I just loaded my truck up with the weight distribution hitch, um, the back end would sag more, then I'm decreasing that air resistance when I ride. So I'm helping to maintain some of that factory rake, which is going to improve the overall miles per gallon of the vehicle by having the airbag. Here's one of the other things that's modifiable, and it's, of course, driving habits we're coming up to a stop sign here and one of the things i don't do is i don't accelerate to stop signs or traffic lights if you accelerate to stop signs and traffic lights why it's going to hurt your fuel mileage a lot now again i live in a part of georgia that's pretty warm i live in a part of georgia that's also just a small city and so while i do city driving I don't ever wait for more than one stop at a traffic light. If I'm in, let's say, Atlanta or Houston or Orlando, those are cities that I know when I'm driving through them, I might sit at a traffic light during the daytime for five or six stops. So I'm effectively just idling all the time. Again, that's a non-modifiable thing that you really can't do much about in terms of where you live. Now, another modification that you can make, another modifiable factor for improved fuel mileage is something I have not done, which is to go to a cold air intake. Um, if you go to a cold air intake, um, there people say it's marginal, takes years to pay off. Now, if you put as many miles as I do per year, usually between 22 and 25,000, a lot of it towing, you may find that it pays off a little bit sooner. However, your vehicle is going to be louder. And when I do as much towing as I do, the reason I don't get a cold air intake is just simply because, although I might like in driving it around town and I might enjoy that, I'm not going to enjoy it when I'm on the road. Not to mention if I had a cold air intake, much like if I had a TRD Pro exhaust or a supercharger, I would be getting on that thing all the time and my miles per gallon would just simply plummet. Now one last thing that not a lot of people know is that if you have steps, particularly bulky steps that run tire to tire, that might actually improve your fuel mileage, believe it or not. Here I have uh, Tiger Star Steps on mine, um, and the I remember back in 2013, uh, one of the things Ram had done to try to increase their fuel mileage was extend their step all the way along the bed, all the way to the back tire. But essentially, keeping that air flow uh, with a larger step, or one that drops down, such as this one does, uh, from wheel to wheel, actually may help improve miles per gallon just ever so slightly. Again, all these things add up to minimal improvements overall. I realize not everyone's going to agree on what's important here, but feel free to leave your comments in the comments section below.